Hi, I'm AJ with Lakota, and today we're going to do a video on winterizing and dewinterizing your trailer. We're going to head back to the water heater. And you've got two valves here at the water heater. And since we're going to winterize, the last thing that you want to do is put any antifreeze in your water heater tank. So we're going to make sure this is shut, which it is now. And we're going to open the bypass, which it is now open. Uh, when you're using it, it's the opposite. Or this would be closed, this would be open. Um, but because we're going to winterize and we don't want to push antifreeze into the tank, we're just going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to open this so that we can push the antifreeze through the hot side, uh, through all the hot water lines. So we're gonna go outside to uh, the water heater on the outside of the trailer now. We don't wanna leave water um, during the winter in the tank. That's not good. So one of the first things I always try to remind people is to pop this relief valve and make sure there's no pressure. Um, otherwise, when you go to loosen this, it will fly out, hit you in the leg. You'll end up with a nice bruise and soaking wet. So you just pop the relief valve, make sure the pressure's off. This is a 1 and 1 16th socket. You want to drain this. This rod is in pretty good shape. Um, this will be good for another season for sure, but you'll start to see this eat away, uh, and that's what it's supposed to do. It'll actually eat at this instead of the inside of your water tank. Um, but this one's in pretty good shape. When you take it out and it, it's really thin and corroded, um, then it's time to replace it. And you can get these at about any RV parts store. It's a pretty common um, piece that you can pick up locally. All right, so when you do this every year, it's, it's a good thing to get in the habit of putting everything in one place so that you don't have to remember come spring where everything's at, right? So this fits right in here. Doesn't hurt to leave it in there for the winter. Um, and we're gonna do the same thing with our caps, which you'll see in just a moment. Oh boy, we get to lay in the mud. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go underneath here. And uh, you don't want to have your tank crack, so you want to make sure all your lines are empty, uh, antifreeze is through the lines, and you want to make sure your tank is drained as well. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, we're good. So we take the cap off of that, looks like this one hasn't been used a lot, and uh, let that drain. And we'll take this cap, put it the same place that we put our rod, in the water heater door. If you have some uh, low point drains, hot and cold, it would be near your shower base. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next, just take a look at those. Right here, and do the same thing. All right, once the water's out, then you can put these back on. If we leave the water in there, it can dilute the antifreeze and then it, it isn't doing its job as it should. So once you've got the water out, you can put these back on. And now it's time to put the antifreeze in. So now we're getting ready to introduce the RV antifreeze into the lines. And uh, definitely make sure you use RV antifreeze so that it's non-toxic. Now we get it in bulk. 
Uh, we winterize trailers throughout the year. So we have it in a bucket um, for this demonstration. You're probably gonna have it in jugs, uh, which is fine. So depending on your, your floor plan, your pump can be different locations. Uh, in this particular trailer, it's gonna be under the step. We have a, a riser wall tank here. So typically there's screws in the corner of these steps. Um, you feel around for your fingers. Uh, you wanna use a square bit and remove the screws so that you can lift this up. Uh, we've already removed the screws for this demonstration so that we can get to the pump. All right, so there's two valves here and you can see this tube. This is your winterizing tube. It goes to nothing um, because we're gonna put this in this bucket and uh, that way we can get the antifreeze in the lines. So this we wanna have open uh, so that we can pull the antifreeze in and we don't wanna pull from the fresh tank, right? So we're gonna close that one. So we're gonna turn the pump on. Here we go. Okay, sounds like the shower's on. And it is, and it's coming out pink. It's coming out pink, so we're gonna shut that off. There's plenty of antifreeze in there. So we're good there, and if you're worried about it, you can clean that up uh, with a rag. We can, we'll wipe that down. We're gonna make sure that's pink, and it is. And that is definitely pink now. So we're good there, Santa freezing that. And then what a lot of people forget, there we go. I'm gonna make sure we get plenty of antifreeze in that water valve behind the uh, foot pedal there. So we're all good there. Both sinks, the shower and the toilet, we've got antifreeze through the lines. One, uh, one thing that I wanna remind everybody when you winterize um, and you're getting your trailer ready to sit for the winter, that you clean out the horse area, uh, take the mats out, clean the floor really good, clean the mats, let everything dry before you put it back in. Uh, you should do that throughout the season as well, but super important that no urine is sitting on the floor uh, during the winter months. One final thought, if your trailer is equipped with an exterior water spigot, don't forget to run antifreeze through the spigot. So if you're winterizing or dewinterizing and you have questions, you run into something you're not expecting, please just feel free to give us a call. That's what we're here for. We'll be happy to help you. Take care.